What's up boys and girls, Lambo here and in today's video I'm gonna show you guys a game that I played against Harstem on the ladder lately. It was a late game against uh, Skytos and I actually want to talk a little bit about my game plan in late games and power spikes that Zerg has that you guys can abuse. Obviously I know that the armies that I'm about to show you are hard to play. But um, for those of you who like playing late game, because I mean, I think it, it is fun to a bunch of you, um, I would suggest watching this. I'm going to talk about the different unit compositions, the different ways of playing late game, and my decision making in this one, as this was, I think, a nice game to show because I didn't start from being ahead or anything. Actually, my early game didn't go too, too great in this one. And um, it, it was still a. It was still a nice game. I also didn't really switch unit compositions too many times. And I can explain why as well later on. I actually initially today planned on making an analysis video about Dark's late game against Hearthstone. Also, he also played against Hearthstone a late game in the World Team League where he actually played from behind and then kind of stomped Hearthstone. But I started recording that and talking a lot about it and then... I mean, I did want to talk about Dark basically just sitting there and waiting for his opponent to suicide into him. But I couldn't actually take it. Uh, watching it was not exciting at all. There's not that much you can talk about if a guy just sits behind 100 spores and uh, makes Lurker and Faster Viper. I think it's a it's a fine, uh, it's a good, good way to play, to buy time. And then he also goes into a similar late game that I go into. But instead I want to just watch this replay because uh, it's there's a little bit more stuff happening and I exactly know my thoughts. So uh, if you guys want to learn how to play with Lurkers, because I don't actually like playing Lurkers myself, you guys can check out that game. He played from really far behind there and just turtled. Weren't, wasn't that many Lurkers. Uh, I went for a Zergling run by here and I actually, because he had literally nothing here, I started making extra Zerglings. This was probably not a great move. Uh, this is sometimes when you see that your opponent has no defenses at home, uh, by the time, like, you realize it, right? And then you make extra links. And then by the time those are on the other side of the map, there is obviously going to be defense there. So that's just me getting carried away pretty much and going a little bit Korean esque, even morphing some bane links here because Harrison plays like, um, in a way where he cuts corners every now and again. So, for example, not having a shield battery here is pretty sick. And he also very often just leaves with his void base. With literally no defense at his third base. So that's why we did that. We also opened with plus one melee, so it's just me trying to get an opportunity. But overall, this did not work out great. And our opponent now is going into two side gate. He opened with two side gate void, obviously. And then he's going into charge and Templar archives and a forward base. Nothing that we can punish, especially on a map like Romanticide. I think on Romanticide, if I want to win, I usually try to play late game. And in tournaments, I try to veto the map because I think it's almost impossible to kill a Protoss on it. So the way we're getting into the late game, first of all, what I do against two staggered Void is I go Ling Bane Queen at the start. And then if I see that they're going High Templars and Icons, I make a base amount of Hydras. Now this Hydra count is supposed to stay below 20. Hydras are not good in late game. They're not very supply efficient, they're not good against uh, against a lot of things, and they don't actually... Yeah, usually I, usually I end up killing my own Hydras eventually. Um, so, you want to not make too many, but I'm making a base amount so that we're safe against a potential Archon, High Templar timing, or even Archon in, in War Prisms with a Zealot Warpen, and then they try to attack against this kind of stuff. So other than that, we're just joining up, immediately going up to 10 gas. We're going Greater Spire to survive. Um, now here's what I talked about a, a little bit before, is that if my opponent actually goes for um, 2 Stargate Void Ray and then goes for Robo Bay, I really like going into Ultras. And if they do that, they also can't push. So what I do is I go Double Spire for instant upgrades. I would probably get plus 1 Carapace and still a Greater Spire just in case they're massing immortals for some reason blindly and then I also get an ultra cavern instantly and I also um, continue the uh, carapace upgrades which I will do now as well because it benefits the zerglings greatly so if you have 
For example, three two zerglings against two zero zealots, especially with adrenal glands, the zerglings will destroy them. So it just makes moving out so much harder for the Protoss. Obviously, focus on creep spread and such, and go up to about a hundred drones. If you take a look at this army, if you think I'm like, if you think he could kill me, you're wrong <laughs> because he did just. He's maxed right now, right? But this is not an army, right, that can walk on creep. The Void Rays don't do anything in the actual pushes. When they do the pushes, and then usually, if they go to Stargate Void Ray, they do not have enough Archons to zone for the Templar. so whenever he steps on creep, the Templars will exactly all get one Storm off and then die. So, overall, going Ling Min Hydra, I think, is fine against this. And then we're instantly going into... We made six Corruptors for safety purposes, and then we're gonna morph them into Broodlords if I feel like my opponent's attacking me, which I did not feel like that was the case, but I saw this War Prism, so instead I tried to use some of the Corruptors to kill this War Prism. Yeah. Once you uh, start floating minerals, you can start making static defense. Now, against a carrier timing, you want a lot of spores, especially if you go for Brute Lords, because early on you do not have the money to get Viper, Corruptor, Brute Lord instantly. Um, especially enough corruptors to actually fight the carriers by themselves, so you need the spores to tank a lot of the da damage from the interceptors and to also kill some interceptors. And for that, it is not quite the time yet. Like he doesn't have a carrier count that is that he can push with yet. He has two carriers, right? Um, instead, we're spending the money at first into extra spines. This is a cute little spine position. I do this very often on a couple of different maps. So I wall in some spine crawlers so that if the zealots are a move, which very often protoss players not actually look at their run buys, believe it or not. Um, uh, and that's my opponents, which means your opponents very often also will not look at their zealot run buys. You can wall, semi wall in your spines, and then if there's like five zealots here, they're all going to try attacking this spine, which is only going to be one zealot at a time, and the two spines actually end up winning, which um, is awesome. So, as a cute li little trick, you can also do this if there's a little bit more space behind to just um, fancy little positioning. And yeah, we, for now, the game plan is very, very simple, because you can't really do anything against shield batteries. If you find openings, like this, for example, if you find openings, try to use Zerglings and um, to inflict damage or trade. Because Zerglings, at this point, are well, like, way more upgraded than his units, which is awesome. Like, the Zerglings, when they have same armor upgrades as the Zealots have attack upgrades or higher, they don't get um, two shot by the Zealot. And on top of that, when they have Adrenal Glance and plus 3, and the Protoss plays to Stargate, they completely wreck them, because the Zealots don't have... A, they, they never have any armor upgrades. He's gonna have plus 1 shields now, which is not that great for Zealots. Right? Zealots having 100 HP and 50 shields only. So yes, yeah, Zerglings trade fantastically against Zealots. And now I kinda wanna start getting rid of my... of my Hydras. And at this point, it's all about how to split your army. So... What are the things that you are afraid of right now? You you need to at all at all times think about what could kill you right now, or or am I afraid, or can I just do whatever I want? Um, how many how much army do I really realistically need at this point to defend a push? So I have eight brood lords and eight corruptors and two vipers. Eight corruptors and two vipers does not seem that strong, right? That's why we're making extra spore crawlers to fortify our position. And once we have the money to make more corruptors, which is right about now. I will start sacrificing these Hydras. Um, especially once I notice a push coming. What you can do with the Hydras is instantly counterattack, right? Instantly counterattack, and then either he needs to come back and deal with the Hydras, or he or the Hydras will either way they will die. I can suicide them into the cannons, and then I can reinforce with the corruptors. But in general, if you play this style, you want um you want a base amount of Brute Lords, depending on how big his ground army is, so if he had Mass Archon with a couple of Tempest, I would need way more Brute Lords. But since this is not the case, I need ab about 8 Brute Lords to be safe, and then you want to get up to 22-23 Corruptors, so that even if you usually a Corruptor can get one-shot quite quickly, like usually you want to get up to around 24, so you can start one-shotting their units. And early on, what is also nice is that the Hydras, especially with the Carapace upgrades, are not that bad against the Interceptors. Which is nice. So we also keep scouting, and then once I notice that his army is going here, I instantly, before I, before I saw this army, I went down here with the Hydra Ling, because I knew he uh, 
his next runby will come down here, right? It, there is no point, so that's just logical thinking. If he goes here with his, uh, with his air army, there is no world in which he will ever go and do a runby here because my broodlers are already here. So instantly, you you should realize that as well because you need the broodlords here to defend these bases, right? So you have your broodlord, corruptor, viper, spore crawlers, spine crawlers here, and then your anti runby slash runby army will go to the other side, always instantly. Always have the run by army or run by defense army on the other side of wherever the Protoss um, the Protoss's air army is. And this is why you want to have enough corruptors, preferably to one shot carriers, because then you can start abducting at a faster pace. And now I kind of want to start losing my Hydras. So I just actually kill them myself. I really don't want them anymore. Uh, it's much better to have the counter attack army and counter attack defense army in Ling Bane. It's more uh, supply efficient, it's also faster, and it can counter attack quicker. And it can capitalize better on if your opponent, for example, is just now taking a new base. We made sure he didn't get this. Since he didn't have Tempest, I was pretty confident, especially since I saw this army still here, that he his army is not perfect yet, he doesn't want to fight yet. So we pushed forward a little bit with the Spore Crawlers. With the Spore Crawlers and the Broodlord Corruptor Viper, especially since we got a pick off, we killed this base, and now we have Creep here. <clears throat> so we still keep poking forward and the reason I'm doing this by the way is because I think my army at this point is better than his he doesn't have Tempest against Broodlord still and yeah we, we basically kill a bunch of High Templars you can see Rhesus lost his even which is fantastic for us we abduct another uh, carrier and now that the Broodlords are starting to run low we retreat while kiting yeah while we're running back we're still shooting with the Broodlords every time and we're still trying to abduct units and overall that was a fantastic trade for us now the reason I'm doing this, even though I have 87 drones, is because I already have enough Corruptors, which is usually never the case. But because I just sacrificed my Hydras, I actually remade them into Corruptors, and I did not remake my anti my anti run by force yet, because I actually have a lot of Spines. So I, I did not feel the need for that. But usually, what my game plan is in date game, is actually quite simple. I try to... Um, outmine the Protoss. Well, I try to take my half of the map as fast as possible and I try to collect all the resources that I have very fast. Um, as a Zerg player, you can have more drones than the Protoss will have probes very, very often. So what happens is I try to mine out all of these bases and then I start sacrificing drones for for buildings, which usually if I make spore crawlers, I will remake the drones. But later on, I will not. And then usually... The weakness of Protoss is when I take their 6th base. The 6th base usually is quite hard to take. On this map is a little bit different with the way he's, he's expanding, but this is already very exposed. Um, the last 2 bases is what I'm fighting for, usually. Um, so Romanticide has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 bases. On 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bases. Okay, I was like... I ended up at 7 with the counting, and I was like, it has 8 bases, doesn't it? Um... But yeah, my, my point was, I basically tried to mine out my half of the map very fast until the Protoss starts expanding towards the last two bases. And once that happens, my bases should be fortified enough that I can start um, just slow mining my last two bases. Like, I, I will mine them out eventually, but I will sacrifice a lot of drones to mine the last couple of bases. And then I will try to fight for the last Protoss bases. And the way I'm doing this is usually, usually I try to um, either have a big, big run by army and then poke at one side with the brute lords and then go to the other, maybe with Ling Bane, um, something like that, and then try to constantly abduct, or I go for a very low army supply on of mobile units and I just go for a massive army and try to push with the spark horse or hold the position, hold them off for as long as possible, and then try to basically just find fights away from shield batteries. What this does is that the Protoss can't just sit there and and relax and get up the shield batteries at the most exposed bases. And usually once it comes to the last two bases, Protoss bases are also super far apart. So if the Protoss wants to keep up with the speed at which the Zerg is expanding, what's going to happen is they're going to have bases here and here, because I'm going to take these two. So if he tries to take these two himself, this base is super exposed, right? And Protoss has the, the biggest mobility that Protoss has is Recall, and uh, he needs to really use that well if he would realistically want to defend, but what 
what will happen in most games is that, that the Protoss will wait a little bit before taking these bases, which means you mine a little bit more than Protoss, and then you start fighting for the last two bases on the map. Um, on other maps uh, that have seven bases, I would do this a little bit earlier. So, on Remind side, there's eight bases, so this happens a little bit later. I start taking these bases now. I also fortify them. Spine crawlers are very good because they don't cost supply, which means I can have more supply. I have, can have less supply in links. I literally only have 20 links right now, but my opponent also doesn't have any zealot run by groups or anything like that, right? So, yeah. So, we're taking these bases. All right, I wanted to talk about when we go for Lurkers, when we go for Ultras, and when for Brute Lords. So all three are uh, have similar purposes against Protoss. They are to zone out the High Templars and the Archons, because High Templars and Archons own Corruptors and Vipers. So you do not want to have those go um, just run around uh, for free. So Lurkers, I think, are the easiest way to go into late game and to just survive. I think the Lurker is... A relatively mobile unit, so it's slightly more mobile than the Brute Lord, but it actually is a lot easier for Protoss to position themselves because it has the least catch potential out of any of the units. Because if you run up to them and you don't literally run next to them, like if I run here and I borrow all my lurkers, he can still run away even if the spikes come out, they're not going to connect. And the Protoss has to really mess up if they want to get their High Templars caught, and what that means is that the Protoss can always have the High Templars way ahead of their air units. That's why I really dislike Lurkers, because catching Protoss armies feels a lot harder, actually, um, for me personally. So, yeah. That's uh, option number one. Uh, option number two is the Ultralisk, which is the best at catching armies, especially if you ever get any fungal, or if you just see High Templars a little bit too far in the front, you can just aim move the Ultras, and then when the Protoss air units start attacking your uh, ultras, you can start abducting them, the high templars will need to run instantly, uh, so it is the best catch mechanic. The problem with the ultras is that it kind of gets countered by immortals and archons, so once they have immortals and archons underneath their carrier army, you need to transition into brute lords. And then brute lords have decent catch because they're a little bit, um, like they have very high range, so it, it can happen that the pros doesn't have vision of them and then they come in, in, into range of the high templars and instantly kill a couple. This happens a lot more than with Lurkers, so it's a little bit harder for the Protoss uh, to control quite often, uh, realistically. And they are super tanky, so in general it is the best super late game army, the Broodlord, if you actually want to build the perfect army of Zerg. And if you have 200 army supply, and the Protoss has 200 army supply, you always should rely on the Broodlord, not on the Lurker or the Ultra. So uh, Lurker, I think, is an early late game unit. Ultra is a good late game unit if there are not if there are no ground units from the Protoss and he's not prepared for it. And then the Brute Lord is very good if there are high Argon counts still. Uh, very good if there's any form of ground army and is just a good all-around unit. And usually what I do is I switch between Ultras and Brute Lords quite frequently during a late game. Uh, personally, I like Ultras the most because it's the most mobile, but um, Brute Lord is the best all-around unit, so I will go into Brute Lords eventually. And in this game, because he did not go for Disruptors right away, I felt the need to go into Broodlords, but since he never started trading, I never went into Ultras, and I just stayed on Broodlords, and because so far I think the game is going quite well. Because so far the game is going quite well, um, I decided to just stay on Broodlords for now. So now, one thing that I said before is I start contesting once they start expanding. But what do I do if his entire army is there? I can't just engage into it, right? It's Tempest. So what I do here is I start attacking the bottom of the map with the Brute Lords. The reason for that is that I already mined a lot here from these bases, and this is still very fresh. So if he wants to just start trading bases, this is good for me. On top of that, his army is very slow at killing stuff, and I can try to buy time with Infestors plus Vipers. So, in general, trying to trade bases in this scenario is very good for us. So we go to the bottom with the Brute Lords, and then we have the counterattack army that I told you about. With Ling Bane, we start taking a piss on the Nexus, and the Brute Lords more move down towards his second freshest base. Now the Ling Bane comes in here and kills this, which is huge. Like, this is a huge moment in the game. Always try to kill these bases while they're starting to build up. Clearing 10 cannons, once they're done, 
I know this sounds obvious, is a lot harder than when they're building. But I really mean a lot harder, like a, a lot harder, because they can start warping in there on top of the cannons that are already there. So you gotta try to, um, you gotta try to pick your timings accordingly. And now that I realize, if he wants to start fighting about these bottom, um, for these bottom bases, which I'm fine with, I just start taking the top bases. And this, this, um, this video is not so much about explaining you guys how to micro because I already have videos on that, and how to take fights. I think the army that I have always with good micro will take about even trades with the, his his army unless there's shield batteries and tempest and wolf. Then my army starts trading very poorly, but that should never happen if I just keep fighting on creep right so what we're doing here is we're moving forward the spines and we're starting to take his bases and now he's in big trouble because now i actually have a fortified location here which he can't simply kill right if he sends a couple of air units here chances are that i'm just gonna push this if he also sends two little air units, I could just defend it with Corruptors while holding here with Infestor, Spore, Broodlord, Viper. I could be making a couple more spores, by the way, but I mined minerals much slower than gas, so I was worried if I made too many spores that I um, run out of minerals for the Remax, which I think is reasonable. And uh, I don't actually think spores are that necessary against Tempest armies. Uh, they're just there to buy time, they're very good for detection, but they're not actually as important um, in this scenario. They're very important once you don't have, when you don't yet have a perfect army. But as you have the perfect army, not as important as you might think. So yeah, now we're taking all the bases and now we have four more bases than him, especially once I take this. And practically we just, uh, this one small move that you guys might, might not have even realized and that a lot of you guys might not have done, is I see him taking this base and I'm playing to deny the last two bases, which is a very simple game plan. But the way I'm doing it is I'm not just running head first in here, I'm going down here to first his army here, because I took these bases earlier than him, which means if I kill these bases with my brood lords, he kills these bases with his air army, that's good for us overall, right? And while he's killing these bases, I can also then run by here and still kill this with the zerglings. There's a, a lot of potential here because we have very fast units uh, with our zerglings. And what probably will not happen, uh, which you might wonder now, is what if he just kills this and then recalls here? Th that's the only thing that you need to worry about. Against Tempest armies, it's not that big of an issue because you can buy... First of all, if you have Infested Rep, you can buy time. Even without Broodlords being close to it, just make sure to try and zone um, a little bit. Spore Crawlers also buy a lot of time. My stack defense was still here at this point in time. Uh, but yeah, you need to make sure that you, you're aware of all these different factors of how fast can my units kill this and then just try to make logical army movements, right? Rather than, okay, I just completely outplay my opponent. I didn't play particularly faster than Harst in this game. It was just this one move where at this point now, what's happening is we're fighting for this bottom and now obviously this is a micro war, right? This is a micro war. But we're... We're up 2k resources, but let's say this game was even trades, even trades. Let's say Harris the Micro a little bit better and we, we we traded evenly. We're now mining resources off his side of the map, which is resources that he will not mine later on if this game goes longer. So my opponent now is forced to do something, which is awesome. That's the one issue in late game PvZ is that the Protoss can sit on their... On their I, I, I don't want to um, curse. Uh, they can just sit there behind their shield batteries and be happy because they can never lose a fight there and then start slowly picking out away at your army with the tempest because tempest plus revelation um over time should always be trading well right that's the issue but if i'm actually mining his bases he needs to come on creep and fight me on my home turf also spotting with changelings so yeah, I, ju I just wanted to t talk with you guys about the, the game plan. I'm gonna play this game out. I'm also gonna upload the replay, obviously, in the description. But this is now execution, which has not that much to do anymore with what I wanted to talk about. Oh, oh, obviously, arm movement here. I used my run by army here to try and snipe a cyber core, which he responded to by void race because the void race left. I immediately went forward and took a fight because I knew I could. Um, so, so so that's also, again, we're forcing rotations, and then if 
our opponent makes mistakes, Darker is a game about mistakes. If our opponent makes a mistake with the way he splits his army, then we try to capitalize on it. And at this point, we don't need to fight him, especially at the shield batteries. We only will if we get a fungal. But what we're doing here, with just posturing, is we're buying time. First of all, we're killing his base right now with the 3-3 three, three links. 3-3 three, three links are great to run by, just use them, please. Um, but we're also mining from all of these bases. So our opponent needs to do something. If he gets over-eager, we get a fungal on him, we can definitely fight. Even if he's super close to shield batteries, if we get a full fungal on this, we, we can try to fight. Or we can even just try to get some abducts, right? Here we got a couple of neurals. We killed some high templars. And these trades are kind of even, right? But well, this trade was not... This, the trade itself until now was even, but he just lost all of his high templars. Once the high templars are gone, by the way, you can just run in and do whatever you want. So I go forward, cast some parasitic bombs, snipe down a couple of units. I think abducting like five units would have been better here than casting three parasitic bombs, but... Whatever, so now here comes the run by. Um, the, be the best run by defense army, I said earlier, is Ling Bane, right? It's actually Ling Bane and Faster, because Infestors deal with icons. Uh, because of the Nur. So that's the best run by defense army. If, you, if you're wondering how do I defend run bys and how do I run by, that's how. You have a couple of Broad Infestors and Ling Bane. And now he's killing the boy base with the Void Race. I'm going to try to catch some, but I'm a little bit late, so this was me making a slight mistake. But at this point, I know that I mined already a bunch of this. This gas is completely mined out. I just go completely to the top. I say, in fact, the bottom of the map. No, oh my god, and now I curse anyways. Okay, whatever. So uh, <laughs> now I said uh, F the bottom of the map, and then we just, we're just migrating to the top. To the top. So, yeah. It's all just... Logical choices. The entire goal in late game is to mine more than your opponent, because if you mine more than your opponent, you can trade worse. And a base has a lot of resources. Like this game, I'm sure we mined 20k more resources than him. Overall, probably even more. Uh, and yeah, it also forces him to engage, but because I'm feeling so good about what we already accomplished so far, I start pushing forward, I saw the high temper out of position. We already traded 6k better than our opponent. And the thing is, if you can't micro like this with the late game army, it's fine. If you completely outmine your opponent. And if your opponent plays Kytos, and you're good with the Zergling run bias, you guys can outmine him way harder. Way harder. And if your opponent actually engages into you, and your micro is worse, you can make more spore crawlers than I did this game. Because this is more competitive mining wise, if your opponent just camps on three base with mass cannons, you got you guys will have like twice as many resources as them. Like it's not even gonna be close. So you guys can just sit there with mass spore colors and they will eventually need to go run into you. And if they run into mass spore colors, I don't care how bad your uh, micro is, uh, it, you should be fine. But yeah, the, the, these these moves I'm not commenting on too much anymore because this is just. Uh, this is just micro. The, 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 the biggest move was forcing the situation where our opponent needs to attack into us and we, al we already outmined him, right? Also, I saw that he made a bunch of icons now, so I'm making extra Broodlords just to be safe. How I guess one thing that I can talk about is how does the perfect army look? The perfect Zerg army looks different from game to game because it looks different depending on what the Protoss army is. So you guys very often come to my Twitch and you're like, how many banings is the perfect bane number? Or what's the perfect Bravager ratio to Roaches? Or what's the be best amount of Infestors in the late game? And these questions, I always say it depends on the situation. And I always hate I always hate these questions because there is no such thing as like, this is the perfect army composition. Because Zerg is very reactive, even now, even still in late game, when there's not that many strategic choices to be made anymore. Our opponent now has a bunch of icons, carriers, void rays, many void rays, right? Many void rays. So what we want is we want enough brute lords to make sure that we're safe against the ground army first and foremost. Corruptors, what the corruptors job is they one shot units one by one. So basically every corruptor after the first 20 one or so, which is what you need to kill a carrier with maxed upgrades, or maybe 22. I already forget again. Um is not actually contributing to the fight. So I make the base amount of Corruptors, 
and then a couple extra because some will die very fast, right? This is a big army, right? Things will die. Um, so I make more than that, but very important to make a bunch, enough spellcasters to be safe that you don't lose them all. Uh, so I have like 11 festers, 3 vipers, and I make enough rulers to make sure I win the ground fight. The ground fight is the most important. Think about dealing with the air later. Just make sure that you zone out the high templars, the icons. And don't die against the stalker, remax, warpen. Those are the biggest things. And then these spellcasters, if I micro correctly, together with the 33 corruptors, should be able to um, run circles around the Protoss army. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna give you guys obviously the last uh, fight, even though the game is already over. Uh, if you look at our bank, our bank is almost as big as his entire army. If you look at it, it's almost as big as his entire army. So this is uh, th this is the lead that we've gotten, which I I I didn't mine as much of these bases yet as I would have liked to, because I stayed on a low drone count to make sure that we won't die, because I thought he actually would attack onto me much sooner, right? But um, we definitely did outmine him quite a bit, and if this game goes any longer, we're still mining this. And you know what he has? He has a base that already has, <laughs> has an empty geyser, so this is not actually that helpful for him, right? So he needs to attack into us, so that's why I'm, I'm on a low drone card already very early on. And that's, that's why this game is already over, so... This is my vision right here. We find a neural... We parasitic bomb wherever the void rays are. We start focus firing units one by one. The brutalers are A move to the left. Focus fire the focus fire the <coughs> mothership as early as you can because it makes looking at the fight a lot simpler. And yeah. That's it. That's how I beat uh that's how I win my late games. Very, very often. Uh very often my games look like that. Um sometimes if the Protoss does not want to defend his bases, I might kill this base, and then he tries to take these two, and I will try killing this eventually and taking these two. Basically, my entire game plan and late game evolves around outmining my opponent. Now, one thing that I didn't really talk about is when I swap into Ultras. Uh, usually, if I would see an army like this, and the game is more mobile, I like to, if I lose some Broodlords, I, I sometimes even like to run by some Broodlords, but you can also just swap into Ultras. Uh, if you guys can't control Broodlords, because Broodlords are relatively hard to control, if you guys go Lurkers first, the same army will be built from the Protoss. They also will not have any Icons and Immortals, so if you guys want to play Lurkers first, and then go into Ultra, Corrupt your Viper after, I think that's probably the easiest way of playing this. And your game plan, the, the great thing about it, your game plan looks exactly the same. And it might even be easier for you guys to do, because the Ultras are faster, they're better at killing bases. So it might even be easier for you guys to play this with Lurkers or with Ultras, but the army composition doesn't really matter that much. It's all about we're mining out as fast as possible while just making the necessary units to survive. And then once we're once the Protoss mined out all of his bases but two on his side, we start going lower on the drone counts and then we start trying to trade more aggressively. And that's the base idea that I wanted to explain to you guys. I, I know this was relatively high level stuff. Um, but this is how complex the game plans can be sometimes. Or in this case, it's not honest, it's honestly not that complex. It's relatively simple, but um, it's not just I make my army and I try to win the game. Uh, there are obviously some thoughts behind it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. A little bit of a more of an in-depth letter replay analysis, I guess. And yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.